Do you realize that anybody with a software idea can now bring that to market all on their own? This is a massive opportunity for entrepreneurs and founders. No more begging for funding, no more cajoling engineers. We can now go straight from vision to execution. Today, I wanna show you how to build your first full stack app with Windsurf. I spent many hours experimenting to come up with a simple step-by-step -step process for getting the most out of this powerful coding tool. We're gonna to build a basic CRM complete with the database and other features. While I was running my marketing agency, we served SaaS and software companies exclusively, and in those 10 years, I was able to network with some pretty amazing developers. I've been shocked at how Windsurf can rival and even exceed the work that I've seen from those teams. The first thing you gotta do is head on over to windsurf.com and download and install the software. You can definitely get a feel for it on the free plan, but pretty quickly you're gonna wanna upgrade to the pro plan. I'm not sponsored by Windsurf. This is just a tool that I feel strongly about and I've gotten a lot of use out of. Once you've got it installed, you should see something like this. I'm gonna go ahead and open an empty folder here. Once you've opened an empty folder, you're gonna see the main sections here. This is your file explorer. This is the main workspace where you're gonna see all your code. And this is where you're going to interact with the AI by typing in here using either the write or the chat functionality. You can also select which AI model you're going to use right here in this little dropdown. And you've got your past conversations down here, which is super helpful. And if you go up to the top menu that says terminal, you can open a little terminal window down here. So those are the major sections of this tool. And now let's just jump in and start building. So the first step of my process is I like to start with the back end, the database itself, and then work towards the front end. So those are the steps we're gonna take building this CRM example. For the database for this project, we're gonna use a very simple database, SQLite. For the back end, we're gonna use Node, and for the front end, we're gonna use React. This is a very popular tech stack that it seems like the AI naturally wants to write in, so I think that's a great place to start. Now jumping into the cheat sheet. I make a cheat sheet like this for every single video that I create. It includes all the prompts we're going to go through today and a whole lot more about using Windsurf. These are all instantly available to anybody who joins my Patreon. There's a link in the description, so check that out. I'm going to start with this prompt that just says I'd like to build a simple CRM tool using SQLite, Node React, and React. To start, can you recommend a database schema for this? Please don't write any code, just think through the schema. Let's copy and paste that right here into the AI part of Windsurf. I've been very happy just using Gemini 2.5 Pro in conjunction with Windsurf. You may need to jump through some hoops with Google Billing to get that connected. I know a lot of people are having luck with Claude as well. And this has done a great job pulling together the schema here, thinking through a lot of different things that I would not have thought through. Next, I'm just gonna say, great, let's write the SQL script to create these tables in a SQLite database. Drop that right in here, and you can think of the database just as a giant spreadsheet with different sheets that are connected to each other and different rules that are keeping all the data um, you know, safe and uh, validated. It's creating the companies table, contacts table, deals table. And with everything here, we wanna click accept. One of the major things I've done in the past is forgotten to click accept. Sometimes it doesn't pop up quite as uh, noticeably as it is here. And that can lead to a lot of trouble down the road. So word to the wise. And now we're on to creating the backend. So I'm just gonna say next, let's set up a Node.js backend. Gonna copy and paste this right in. And truth be told, Windsurf is smart enough that it's gonna give you a lot of these options of where to go next. This is one of the things I really love about it over Firebase is that it gives you these commands right here and it you can just click accept and it will run these commands for you rather than forcing you to simply copy and paste those into the terminal. So it has control of that terminal better than most of the other AI tools I've used for coding. We're gonna go ahead and run these. This is installing all of the different packages that we're going to need. And it's run into some errors, but all of these errors it has a plan for. And now at the top here, these tabs let you flip through and see all the different files that have been created and you don't necessarily need to understand much of this, but I find the more of it that you do understand, the better of a coder you're gonna be. So in your off time, maybe as you're taking a walk, start to ask the AI, you know, what are these different things? What is the package.json? 
what should a normal, you know, node file structure look like? And in that way, you're going to be much better off as you try to steer these models in the future. Now we can see all these different files built up here and just take a scan and look through to see if anything seems weird. And the more that you do this, the more you'll start to understand, you know, if, if files are not uh, structured in the right way and you can start to nip some of those errors in the bud. But now it's time to run this all powerful NPM run dev to really start setting this up. And again, if you don't know what that means, it's no problem. Just roll with it. And the more and more you do this, the more you're going to start to understand these different steps that you go through every time you're building out an app. And these different um, selectors here select different versions of the terminal. And in this one, we can see that the server is now up and running and it is listening on localhost 3001. And next I'm gonna ask it to populate the database with some test data. This should make things a little bit easier as we go along. Copy in that. All right, and now all we need to do is click accept all. Then we need to run these commands. And now I just wanna take a look at some of that data to make sure that it populated okay so we don't run into issues down the road. I found it very beneficial to stop and test at each different step to minimize the problems we run into down the road. Dropping that right in here. There we go, we wanna just grab a command that pulls some of that stuff. We don't want it modifying the files at this point. Okay, the company looks good. The contacts looks good. I'm just kind of accepting Windsurf's word that these look good and giving it a quick look. I'm just making sure there's no errors that are getting thrown. Deals database looks good. Interactions table also looks correct. Awesome. And now it's time to start building our API endpoints, these routes that pull and push the data back and forth from our front end to our database, our back end. In the simplest terms, these are CRUD operations, which stand for create, read, update, and delete. So being able to make those changes to the records in our database. Let's drop this in right into Windsurf. It's gonna build that directory. Gonna accept all changes, and it has now created a whole slew of these endpoints. So you can look through here and see these different commands that allow, allow us to list all the companies, get a single company by its ID, and so on and so forth for the contacts and the deals and the interactions, super cool. But this is really important. This has caused me nightmares in the past. I'm just gonna ask it, can we run some commands in the terminal to test these endpoints? And I'm saying to do it in the terminal because it'll oftentimes try to create a file for doing these tests which can be cumbersome down the road. Dropping that in. All right, it looks like that first test worked and now we're going to check out this next one. It ran that and it says it's retrieving it just as it would have hoped. We're testing a few others here to make sure these endpoints are all working well. It's updating a company. So it's testing all this stuff behind the scenes before we get the front end on and we start getting all these errors. It is now you know, telling us that, hey, that should all work. And so now we've got the database set up, the back end is working and testing. We've got test data in there and I think it's time to start on the fun stuff, which is the front end. So for this, I'm just gonna use this very simple prompt saying let's move on to planning the React front end structure. Don't write any code yet, let's plan first. Dropping that in and I feel like when we plan first without it just diving in and starting to code, we are setting ourselves up for success. And it's come up with a very robust plan for this front end. Now I'm gonna initialize the front end, which basically is just setting up React, which will be the front end, which is basically the HTML, JavaScript, CSS, the stuff that you see on the uh, web browser. It's creating that folder. And this is an interesting one where you need to open it in the terminal and then click Y. So if it's just kind of sitting there and you're waiting for this, um, that's how you move forward. <laughs> And this takes a second because it's downloading a bunch of stuff from the internet, getting things all set up here in the new front end folder. Next, let's make sure that this cores is enabled. This is just a security feature that allows the back end to talk to the front end in a secure way that web browsers need. Installing that. And now let's create the basic API service files. This is just the next step, working our way from the back end to the front end. Now I'm just clicking NPM start and we can see what we've got here. Welcome to the simple CRM. And here we have our simple 
uh, navigation, the companies list. So here are the companies, home, and we don't have any errors. It doesn't look amazing, but we don't have any errors. So <laughs> that's awesome. And we're really off to the races. So all I need to do now is just say, looks good, let's keep building. And I know you can do this all really quickly, build out an entire front end in one prompt with a lot of the tools, but I've found the slower you go, chunk by chunk, the better you're gonna build the foundation and the farther you're gonna get before you start running into massive errors. Awesome, now we have this add a company page where we can add a company. So you can just keep going from here, building it out. But let's see if we can make it look a little bit better. Now we're gonna set up our basic CSS, asking it to set up Tailwind CSS with Shad CN in the front end. This is what's gonna make it look sweet. All right, it's looking a little better, but not great. This is where we might want to implement a front end design tool. There's one I've come across called Magic Patterns, which is pretty awesome. This is just magicpatterns.com. And I've gone ahead and fleshed out kind of what I would like this CRM to look like and have built out everything here that we can then now grab this code and start to combine and merge this design code with what we've created in Windsurf. Here are the prompts I used inside of Magic Patterns to get this look and feel, just very simple stuff. I'm looking to design a basic CRM tool for my startup and please include some Shad CN components. And with that, I was able to get this pretty good looking um, dashboard here. And I tried several things inside of Windsurf to sort of merge this UI with what we had going on already. But it wasn't until I used this prompt that things really started to move forward when I actually just attached a screenshot and said, hey, can you make it look like this? So I grabbed a screenshot of this, combined it with that prompt and finally was able to get something looking pretty good here. It was important that I said, I know that we do not have all the functionality yet. Please add placeholders where necessary. So now I think our app is starting to look pretty cool. You can just keep going in this way, building out functionality and UI until you've got something that you really like. Let's try it now with this customer's view. I'm just gonna grab a screenshot of this. This is the design created inside of uh, Magic Patterns. Here's what our current um, customers tab looks like, or companies is what it's called in our version. Grabbing this prompt, right into Windsurf, uploading that screenshot, just adding a little text here, letting it know we're focusing on the customers page right now. I'm saying let's start to add that blue color that we see in the screenshot. All right, that has finished running, and now look at that. It's looking sweet. Very cool. This is exactly what we're looking for here. And this is a legit working app right here. You can see this messages page now. We need functionality, reports page, settings all needs to be built out. But just in a few minutes, you know, if you follow those steps, you can create something that's a legit working app, unlike you know, a lot of the things that you see people experimenting with where it's all just front end without any back end, without any real code base. I like to think of this as a legitimate vibe coding workflow where you're building the database on back end to the front end. This cheat sheet is absolutely packed with tons of resources, including all the prompts that we went into today. So make sure to check that out. There's a link in the description that along with over 130 other cheat sheets are all instantly available to anybody who supports me on Patreon. I've got another video all about about creating a one person startup. So everything you need outside of the code, there's a link to that here. I'll see you over there. Make your dreams come true.